I don't make music to just be, you know, obnoxious and uh, I would like to Tall man. I'm all pumped up on sugar and ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're sitting inside, uh, is it the holy church or just the church? I guess the holy uh, went out with us coming in. <laughs> Could be a song title. Exactly. Yeah, the, the place has been uh, de-Christianized actually. Uh, I didn't know that, but they have a big, hmm? there's like a big ceremony. So they had that here and then they pulled the cross down. There used to be a cross right there by the picture and they, they took it down and they had their, their ceremony. And then they walked out in like a parade with a cross <clears throat> and then to the next church. Really? Yeah. Fortunately, we had that picture coming in from our friend Paul Lopley, photographer. Uh, it's from Svalbard. It's awesome. So the church is... Dechristianized. 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 I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, I didn't know either. I've, I've never heard of that. <coughs> Chettle, let me get you a glass of water. Groot. <coughs> nice. It's dechristianized holy water. <laughs> Wunderbar. Mm. Full of the fizz. Fizzy water. Ah. You want some sugar? No thanks. Feel better? <laughs> no. <laughs> Water is making too much sound. Yeah, uh, sorry, what was the question? When did the process of the new album Who Do You Love start? Or does it have a specific start at all? Yeah, it does. If I remember right, it was January 2016. Shut off, yeah. Why? I only had it on record for uh, for so and so long. Okay, cool. <laughs> Paparazzi. Because um, obviously I've been working on these songs for a long time and it's impossible to know when, when that started. That's probably sometime seven years ago. Eight years ago, probably. This album? The yeah, the songs, like the structures of the songs, or the riffs. Holy shit. I'm guessing it would be around the time when me and Karen got together and then a couple of years later and we lived in Oslo and that would be 2010, yeah, 2009. Yeah, yeah. so it's seven, eight years ago. But why hasn't these songs been released before that? Because I've had so many other songs. There are usually bulks of songs. You need to wait for each bulk. To, you need to do it in, in the right order, or else it'll be strange. But considering the sound though, like the sound on these songs was so different from the previous album yeah. and the albums before. Yeah, I know. So and even the gospel was a big jump, I guess. Yeah. I think it has to do with me at that time developing my songwriting a lot. Like I went from that old punk style, <laughs> nice rock punk style to just venturing into new territory around those years. Yeah. So there was a lot of different stuff going on. And there's even more stuff coming that would be different. It started around seven, seven, eight years ago with the, like the structures and the ideas. And then the lyrics, I wrote those throughout 2015, 2016. So those are newer. It's always like that. So but the lyrics are new, but the songs are old. But the work on the album, I think we started around January 2016 with me and Joachim. Joachim Heiber Johansson, who's the drummer. He's been the, the Arab rock drummer for three or four years now, actually. Fantastic drummer. Me and him, we started working on those songs here and we rehearsed here in the studio and basically just uh, trying to figure out the drum patterns <laughs> and some of the structures. And from there on, we just worked our way through 2016 and then I booked a studio in Chicago, in Illinois, at Steve Albini's studio, oh, Electrical Audio. Yeah, somebody might know who he is. He's quite well known, I guess. Yeah. Shellac. Both. Big Black, one of my favorite bands. Um, it's another band. And he, he's done so many bands, like he's recorded all of these bands. There's one band that we have talked about a little bit. Nirvana? Yeah, that's pretty... He did In Utero. Oh my god. Yeah, and he did Pixies and PG Harvey and... 
uh, still many other bands. I'm still pissed that they haven't released the Albini mix of In Utero yeah. on vinyl. They have actually in the box. They have now. There's an In Utero box because I saw it at the studio. I'd never seen it before. Isn't that the anniversary edition? I thought so. It's a big, like, thick In Utero box. Yeah. Because I saw it was laying around in the studio. It's CDs. Inside it is just presented. In uh huh. Okay, that could, could be. Because I've listened to the Albini mixes and it's interesting because, in a way, it sounds. His mix, because you would, you know, a person like me, I would say, yeah, of course, Albini's mixes are better, but mm, I don't know. Huh. They're a bit more introvert in a way. Because I Albini's. thought it would be more grungy, messy. It's more like introverted, huh. definitely. And the other mix by, who was that guy? Scott Litt or whatever his name is. It's more like um, extroverted. <laughs> huh. There's nothing wrong in either of them, in a way. Yeah. You can tell that one of them is easier to listen to on an iPhone, but that doesn't make it right. The Scott Litt one or the other one. Albini's mixes are kind of... It, they are more grungy in that sense, but the, the vocals are more in, in the background. And instead of more up front. Mm, instead of how they actually are on the record. Wow. I, I've only listened to it just like once, and I've listened to in utero the album since, I was, yeah. since it came out, basically. And I love that album. So uh, obviously I'm a bit colored by the original. Well, of course, um, that was your first impression as well. But uh, I'm a fan of Albini's works though, with so many of the bands that, that I truly love. He's, you know, he's produced so many good records. But some of those bands that I really love, the best records they've done, they've done it with Albini. And um, yeah. Is it your, your first recording with Albini? No, it'll be the... Is it the third time? Third time. We did the Brother Seed ten more and more years ago, and we did Solaranus. First one did not work out really well. How come? We were just too young. We had no idea what we were doing. It was more to record at his studio was the cool thing. Yeah, we wanted to go there. We started out in a very small studio in Oslo, and then we did another one in a small studio in Oslo, and then we just wanted to you know, like one step up, yeah, 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 and then it was one step too far. <laughs> yeah. So we got there and we were like, oh my god, you can hear the guitars just too clearly. The drums are just too big. <laughs> we don't even know how to play, oh my god. And the vocals, and oh shit. And we only had four days, including mixes. So it was just oh. straight in. There was so much potential in those songs, but it didn't work out like it was supposed to. It's an okay album, I guess. We had a Spellemann Norwegian Grammy nomination for it, and it worked out fairly well, you know, but it was kind of, it didn't. It felt it didn't present as you wanted it to be presented. Exactly. It was, uh, how is it? You have the fire in the heart, but it didn't come out. Yeah. Would you ever consider re-recording any old album? We've already done a re-recording of the song It's Hot Drop It. Really? From that album, we did another version because it didn't work out the way I the imagined single, that right? song at all. It was on the EP, yeah. You Bunch of Idiots. Yeah. And when we redid it many years later, it was, you know, how I wanted that song to be. And it, there's, a, there's a big difference in those two versions, how I see it. I guess there would probably be people who would see it differently, but that's just, you know, people's opinions are different. Of course. And that's fine. But for me, it didn't come out right at all, that album. I had bigger plans with it, but it was just, there's a number of factors though. It's like, it's money, it's, you know, time, money time, it's just sheer inexperience, you know. It's not flawless, that album, at all. It was just the experience of getting there and doing it was just, it was a bit too much for us, actually. Intense. It's intense. Unfortunately, we, we didn't go, well, fortunately and unfortunately, we didn't go back for the next album. We should have waited with Revenge. It was kind of a sidestep, which wasn't too good either. But finally we got Revenge and the Brother Seed out of the way in a way. We had enough experience to go back for Solar Anus and then we knew what we were going to. So we knew what we had to do, you know, how to handle the process of being at. But maybe it was necessary to have the first time. Uh, yeah, yeah, in that respect, definitely. You had to sacrifice an album for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah, and we the... kind of uh, sacrificed two albums in that sense uh, for coming back really like focused and on it for Solar Anus and Solar Anus, I mean, Solar Anus was the first step when finally people started to recognize us around. Oh, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's Arabrat. And we won the, the, the Grammy thing, the Spellemann. Yeah. This metal 
for that one and we were on top lists and so many uh, in say like in you said that. In, <laughs> we were on top lists in uh, international magazines like Mojo, like big magazines, not just the not not just a, uh, newspaper in Europe. Yeah, exactly. Or like the metal press. We stepped out of the whole metal thing and went into bigger music territory. So a lot of things changed with that. It kind of started properly, properly started with Solar Ends. Solar Ends was finally when everything just came together and just. That was good. And it's a fucking great album as well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it turned out pretty cool, uh, that one. Sounds interesting. After the gospel, there's been a lot of interest right away. All people were just, you know, like, this record is phenomenal. It's number one at the quietest best of year list before Beyonce's sister and David Bowie. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, this album is phenomenal. Why aren't you guys headlining <laughs> all of the festivals? What's going on here? Why is this still so obscure, I guess, or whatever, so underground? Or Why so... is it though, you know? I think it's a number of factors. It depends on how you uh, promote your band. And I guess we've been uh, going our own way and we've been doing our own thing uh, without compromise for a really long time, which also means that you kind of, I think that you kind of exclude some of your audience if it is kind of like playing a show with the back to you the audience you would kind of it is cool but it, and it's a statement but it's also kind of excluding some people that could potentially be interested in the music I don't make music to just be you know obnoxious and uh, I would like to make music for a lot of people a lot of different people too and I don't exclude anyone I can hear that clearly on who do you love because that's the most diverse album I've heard of Orobot so far. And I quote, so far. So it'll be um, exciting to see what's gonna happen. It's gonna be really exciting. You know what I need now, Jutland? Uh, probably um, something sexually related. Could be. But what I'm thinking of right now that you can contribute with. Yeah. Let's go make some coffee. Oh yeah. Yeah, Groot. Yeah. Groot, Bengalisk. Groot. And you should say it now. Me licking my girlfriend. No. <laughs> Pygmalion. It's Pygmalion. We had the song in, and I thought, oh, let's just get rid of drums, <laughs> guitars, <laughs> bass. Uh, vocals, everything. Wanting to buy Arab records. Oh.